नमस्ते एवरी वन वेलकम टू वाई सी बी लेवल वन टू हंड्रेड आवर्स योगा टीचर्स ट्रेनिंग विद आयुष्मान योग माई नेम इज निधि एंड आई एम गोइंग टू बी योर कंपेनियन इन दिस जर्नी लेट्स बिगिन राइट सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी शटकर्मा नाउ शटकर्मा इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक सो प्लीज पे अटेंशन ऑल्सो मे आई मेक दिस थिंग वेरी क्लियर दैट दिस इज नॉट अ फॉलो अलॉन्ग वीडियो at no point of time this video is apt enough for you to start doing any practice right now in unit 4 in your practical syllabus there are three kriyas mentioned right knowledge of dhoti knowledge of neti and practice of kapalbhati so we will see all these three kriyas in your practical syllabus one more time but i'm sure that all of you are doing your practice every day and kapal bhati is covered in the practice videos right so now the information which we are going to discuss in this video is going to be theoretical only okay moving forward so shat karma shat means six karma means action six actions which are suggested in hatha yoga science to clean the internal organs for the internal organ purification right what are these shat karmas these are dhoti basti neti trataka noli and kapalbhati six now we are going to do a comparative study from two hatha yoga text hatha yoga pradipika and gherand sahita a quick refresher on these two text hatha yoga pradipika and gherand sahita both these are two of the most popular hatha yoga text hatha yoga pradipika is written by sage swatmaram suri the yogic structure the practice of yoga which is suggested in hatha yoga pradipika is known as chaturanga yoga as it has four limbs these are asana pranayama mudra and bandha and nad anusandhana gherand sahita is a collection of study given by sage gherand to his disciple chandra kapali the structure of yogic practices given in gherand sahita is known as saptang yoga also known as ghatasya yoga it has seven limbs these are shatkarma asana mudra pratyahar pranayama dhyan and samadhi so we are going to study the shatkarmas in the context of these two text first one is dhoti so in hatha yoga pradipika the process of dhoti is mentioned as take a cloth which is four fingers wide which is 7 to 8 cm approx and 15 hand span long right which is around 1 and 1/2 meter now this cloth needs to be soaked in the saline water right now how to make saline water so in the in, on internet uh, you will find different ratio of water and salt i will tell you what my teachers have taught me it's 1 liter of water is to 1 teaspoon of salt right you will boil this water and bring it to the lukewarm temperature so this cloth needs to be soaked into the saline water now why saline water because we are trying to match body's internal temperature so if we do not use the saline water and if we use let's say cold water or water without salt then body will treat the water as a foreign element and we will not be able to achieve the expected outcome of the karma in all the karma you will be using the saline water right so the water is soaked in the saline water now we'll sit in squatting position the hips will either be resting on to the floor or on a brick then you will slowly start to swallow the cloth up to 2/3 of the cloth now this cloth can be left inside the stomach from 5 to 20 minutes not more than that if you leave the cloth more than 20 minutes then what will happen body will start to digest the cloth right so we will leave the cloth inside the stomach for the suggested time and then we will start to take the cloth out right as we will take the cloth out we will see the residue of the food on to the cloth this type of cleaning is known as vastra dhoti as explained in hatha yoga pratipika now in gherand sahita four types of dhotis are mentioned antar dhoti dant dhoti 
हृद धोती एंड मूल शोधन अंडर अंतर धोती देर आर फोर टाइप्स ऑफ धोती मैं फर्स्ट इज वात सार वात इज एलिमेंट एयर सो द क्लीनिंग डन विद द एलिमेंट एयर इज नोन एज वात सार ऑल्सो नोन एज द प्लाबिनी नाउ द प्रोसेस इन्वॉल्व गल्पिंग डाउन द एयर थ्रू द माउथ इन काकी मुद्रा काकी मुद्रा इज वेन यू शेप योर माउथ लाइक द बीक ऑफ अ क्रो लाइक दिस right so you gulp down the air in kaki mudra through the mouth and let the air pass through the anal rupt this cleansing is known as vat sar or plavini second type of dhoti which is mentioned under antar dhoti is known as vari sar vari means water so the cleansing done with the element water is known as vari sar it is also known as shank prakshalana right the conch cleansing the way of cleaning also comes from the conch cleansing itself like in order to clean the conch we pour water and the clean water comes out from the bottom similarly in shank prakshalana one needs to treat the body as the conch so you pour water from the mouth you drink water and the exactly clean water is expected to come out from the anal rupt now one may wonder that when we usually drink water the water takes the route of mouth to the stomach to the small intestine to the kidney and then to the bladder right in shanka prakshalana kriya we are expecting to alter that route so the water takes the route of mouth to stomach to small intestine to large intestine and then to the anal cavity right now let's see how it is done now before that shanka prakshalana is done with two approaches lagu shanka prakshalana and dirgha shanka prakshalana the difference is in amount of water we take right so in lagu pr shanka prakshalana let's say we take 3 to 4 or 5 to 6 liters of water and in dirgha shanka prakshalana one will take 7 to 8 or maybe 8 to 10 liters of water in dirgha shanka prakshalana it also takes 3 to 4 hours of time and as i said that exactly clean water is expected to come out of the inner rupt now let's see the process of this cleansing in the context of lagu shank prakshalana so first we prepare 3 to 4 liters of saline water then we gulp down the water okay you do not have to take water one sip at a time you have to gulp down the water as fast as you can and always drink the water in the seating position why is that we'll discuss some other time now once you have taken enough amount of water you have to do five asana these are tadasana tiryak tadasana kati chakrasana tiryak bhujangasana and udarakarsana now you have to perform these asana repeatedly until you feel the urge to pass motion then you will go to the washroom finish the business and then you'll come back again drink the water again perform the asana and repeat the entire process until the water gets over this type of cleansing is known as vari sar or shank prakshalana third type of dhoti which is mentioned under antar dhoti is known as vani sar vani means fire so the cleansing done with the element fire is known as vani sar also known as the agni sar kriya right now the process involves standing with feet keeping shoulder width distance apart inhale exhale and bend forward hold the breath in baha kumbhak and then try to touch the navel against the spine a hundred times right now this count is given in the text but beginners can also begin with 20 counts or 30 counts or as per the capacity and then take it from there right in another variation of vani uh, sar or agni sar kriya people also do it in the sitting position right so vani sar kriya the fourth type of dhoti which is mentioned under antar dhoti is known as bahishkrita or the rectal cleansing now this is a very advanced practice of cleaning the rectum which is also known as shakti nadi the process involves standing navel deep in water 
pushing the rectum muscles out or the shakti nadi out cleaning it with water until the filth is being removed and then suck the muscles again inside in the text it is clearly mentioned that this type of cleaning should be kept secret and it is not easily available even to gods so this is about antar dhoti second type of dhoti which is mentioned in gerandi sahita is known as dant dhoti under dant dhoti there are four types of dhoti which are explained दंत शोधन जिह्वा शोधन कर्ण रंध्र शोधन कपाल शोधन इन दंत शोधन द रूट ऑफ द टीथ इज टू बी रब बाय खदीरा प्लांट और विद क्लीन अर्थ अंटिल द इम्प्योरिटीज गेट रिमूव इन द जिह्वा शोधन इंडेक्स फिंगर मिडिल फिंगर एंड द रिंग फिंगर इज टू बी इंसर्टेड डाउन द थ्रोट एंड रब द इम्प्योरिटीज आउट ऑफ द टंग इन कर्ण रंध्र शोधन द ऑडिटरी कनाल इज टू बी रब बाय द टिप ऑफ द इंडेक्स फिंगर बाय इंसर्टिंग द टिप ऑफ द इंडेक्स फिंगर इन कपाल रंध्र शोधन एज पर द टेक्स द भाल रंध्र ह्योर शुड बी रब एट थ्री इंस्टेंसेस फर्स्ट आफ्टर वेकिंग अप second after meals third just before you go to sleep now the third type of dhoti is hrid dhoti under hrid dhoti there are three types of dhoti which are mentioned vastra dhoti dand dhoti and vaman dhoti so vastra dhoti is same as we had discussed in hatha yoga pradipika initially dand dhoti is similar to vastra dhoti but instead of the cotton cloth a specially designed rubber tube is used these days in ancient times the stalk of a plantain cane or turmeric were used third type of dhoti which is mentioned under hrid dhoti is vaman dhoti now vaman dhoti is also known as vyagra kriya it is done 3 to 4 hours after eating it involves drinking water creating a vomiting reflux so all the residue of the food comes out of the stomach now one of the most common practice of vaman dhoti or rather a variation of vaman dhoti is known as kunjal kriya kunjal kriya is done on empty stomach it's done first thing in the morning the process involves again drinking saline water as much as you can then using first two fingers index finger and the middle finger insert these two fingers down the throat press down the tongue to create a vomit reflux so that all the residue of the stomach comes out this is known as kunjal kriya now this variation of vaman dhoti is not really mentioned in gherandi sahita in gherandi sahita only the vyagra kriya is mentioned so this appears to be the contribution of the modern yoga teachers right somebody who might have done the commentary on gherandi sahita or somebody who has who wanted Uh, this to be more approachable to people right but it definitely is a modern addition right moving forward fourth type of dhoti which is mentioned in gherand sahita is known as mool shodhan right the process involves standing navel deep in water and cleaning the rectum muscles with either the the stem of a turmeric or with middle finger in water again and again right now this covers the entire dhoti in hatha yoga pradipika as well as in gherand sahita let's talk about the contraindications of dhoti who should not be doing dhoti right so because it involves the gi tract so anybody who has intestinal ulcer stomach ulcer pregnant women uh anybody who is recovering from a recent abdominal surgery should not be doing dhoti kriya right also uh, people who have high blood pressure or heart disease they should also not be doing dhoti practice now what are the benefits of dhoti so one of the obvious benefit of dhoti is that anybody who has stomach issues like constipation bloating uh, sluggish digestion indigestion loss of appetite dhoti kriya is beneficial in all of these issues right now as per hatha yoga pradipika cough asthma spleen disease leprosy and 20 kinds of disease which occur due to excess mucus can be removed by the regular practice of dhoti karma 
is it too much information already we have only covered one karma so far we have to cover five more so well just make good notes go through the information two three times and you will start to register it okay good now moving forward second kriya is basti karma or known as yogic enema now in hatha yoga pradipika the process is mentioned as standing navel deep in water and insert a tube in the anal muscles and then contract the anus again and again this type of cleansing is referred as basti as per hatha yoga pradipika in gherand sanhita two types of basti are mentioned jal basti and sthal basti jal basti is same as per hatha yoga pradipika in sthal basti or it is also known as shushk basti the process is to come in vipreet karni asana and performing ashwini mudra right ashwini mudra involves contraction and relaxation of anal muscles again and again right so the process of shushk basti now the contraindications who should not be doing basti karma so because it involves rectal muscle so anybody who has rectal bleeding piles ulcerative colitis colon cancer should not be performing basti karma now what are the benefits of basti karma so one of the obvious benefit is complete cleansing of large intestine so it removes old stool excess bacteria excess heat thread worms from the large intestine right apart from that enlargement of the glands and spleen and all diseases arising from excess air bile and mucus are eliminated through the consistent practice of the basti karma third karma which we are going to discuss is the neti karma or the nasal irrigation now in hatha yoga pradipika as well as in gherandha sanhita sutra neti is mentioned the process involves taking a soft thread there are specially designed thread available these days to perform this karma insert that thread from one nostril so it comes out from the mouth then we can grab both the ends and rub the thread through the channel to clean the channel completely right this is the process of sutra neti as mentioned in hatha yoga pradipika as well as in gherand sanhita now there are some variations of the neti karma which again appears to be the contribution of the modern yoga teachers right these are jala neti dugdha neti and grit neti so dugdha neti and grit neti seems to have therapeutic benefit and these are to be done strictly when advised by the ayurvedic doctor or by the yoga therapist under their guidance only jala neti on the other hand might be the most popular way of performing the neti kriya right now these three practices uh, are not really mentioned in gherand sanhita as i mentioned before that this looks like the contribution of uh, some modern yoga teachers the idea behind the these variations might have been to make the knowledge as available as approachable to people as possible this might have been added by somebody who has done commentaries on gherand sanhita right i have got this knowledge through my teachers right so jala neti we'll see how the jala neti is done so there are specially uh, designed neti pots available to perform the practice or one can also use the traditional indian lota right so the process involves preparing the saline water right and then for the practical purpose we'll lean over the sink and tilt the neck a little upward right then the tip of the long spout of the neti pot is to be inserted into one of the nostril and then we'll start to pour water in a way that it comes out through the other nostril right same thing we will repeat through the other nostril as well now once that is done step 2 is that this process is immediately to be followed by kapal bhati to ensure that there is no remaining water in the channel so what will you do you will make a fist like this keep it down the nose and perform kapal bhati right like this so as you will do this you will see the water droplets coming out of the nostril we will continue to do that until there are no more water droplet coming out of the nostril the third step is 
doing some warm up movements to ensure the absorption or evaporation of whatever water is remaining into the channel now right so we will rub the throat by using two fingers we'll rub back of the ear beside the nostril over the sinus and the forehead right this completes the neeti karma now the contraindications of neeti who should not be doing neeti so the one of the uh, very uh, obvious contraindication is excessive blocked nose right or if somebody has any internal nasal infection then also one should not be doing neeti now the benefits of neeti practice it involves removal of excessive mucus from the nostril from the sinus from the associated passages so that the air can flow without any obstruction it also exerts relaxing effort on the eyes by activating the tear ducts and the tear glands now the fourth karma is trataka or the concentrated gazing in hatha yoga pradipika as well as in gheranda sahita the process is the same it involves gazing at an object until the tears come up right so tratakas is of two types bahiranga trataka and antaranga trataka bahiranga trataka involves gazing at the object antaranga trataka involves visualizing that object with the closed eyes now trataka is done with various objects but the most common way of practicing trataka might be the candle gazing or the jyoti trataka right so how the process is done we we'll light the candle and keep it at the level of the eyes right then you will sit in a relaxing posture and you will gaze at the blue flame the flame which is just above the candle wick we will gaze at the blue flame until the tears start falling now we will close the eyes and visualize the flame with the closed eyes right this process is known as the trataka or the concentrated gazing now who should not be doing trataka so somebody who has headache then you should not be doing trataka otherwise the headache will increase also people who are epileptic they should not be doing the candle gazing because they should not be gazing at a flickering object now the benefits of trataka the benefits of trataka are beyond words it might just be the most relaxing kriya ever suggested right the instant relaxation which trataka practice give is just beautiful it activates the tear ducts tear gland so it's, it exerts a relaxing effort on the eyes as well regular practice of trataka increases the concentration level it also improves your intuition it induces pratyahar now one very special thing about trataka practice which is mentioned on in almost all the hatha text that the trataka practice should not be showed off right it should be kept secret like a golden casket the next karma is noli or the abdominal churning right now noli kriya is considered foremost in hatha yoga practices it is actually given the title of goddess of creation right in hatha yoga pradipika the process involves uh, leaning forward protruding the abdomen and rotating the muscles from right to left in gheranda sahita three types of noli are mentioned dakshin noli muscle rotation from left to right vam noli muscle rotation from right to left and madhyama noli when the middle group of muscles are protruded now the contraindication of noli so the noli should not be done by somebody who is recovering from a recent abdominal surgery during pregnancy during hernia and people who have heart disease or hypertension now the benefits of noli first of all it improves the digestive fire right it actually uh, rejuvenates the entire internal system so it removes the indigestion and all the disorders of the dosha the last karma which we are going to discuss is kapal bhati or frontal brain cleansing now in hatha yoga pradipika the process involves forceful exhalation like the bellows of a blacksmith right 
in gherand sahita there are three types of uh, kapal bhati kriya is mentioned it is also referred as bhal bhati in gherand sahita right these these three types are vatkram vyutkram and shitkram now vatkram so vatkram is fast and long will right we will see anulom vilom in the uh, coming topics but just to give you an idea anulom vilom is also referred as alternate nostril breathing so it involves inhale through the left hold the breath for some time exhale through the right then again inhale through the right hold the breath for some time and exhale through the left right this is one round of anulom vilom so vatkram involves fast anulom vilom without retention right so we will perform pranav mudra which is bending first two fingers at the base of the thumb close the right nostril with the right thumb and right this is vatkrama fast anulom vilom but without retention now the second karma mentioned in gherand sahita is vyutkram right so vyutkram involves drawing water through the mouth and expelling it through the nostril third is shitkram which involves drawing water through the mouth and expelling it through the nostril now contraindication of kapal bhati who should not be performing kapal bhati so anybody who has high or low blood pressure heart disease hernia gastric ulcer epilepsy vertigo etc they should not be performing kapal bhati even even during pregnancy now the benefits of kapal bhati so it is known as frontal brain cleansing right so the brain has four sections we'll read about those uh, sections in the anatomy chapter for now understand that this part is called as the frontal brain the part which is responsible for the executive functioning for the reasoning for the logical ability right so kapal bhati works on this part of the brain so it improves your logics your executive functioning right it also induces a massaging effect on the brain now how does that happen right so there is a fluid called as cerebrospinal fluid this fluid surrounds the vertebral column as well as the brain now every time we inhale this fluid contracts a little every time we exhale this expands a little this contraction and expansion of the cerebrospinal fluid exerts the same effect on the brain itself contraction and the expansion very slightly now usually we breathe 15 times in a minute approximately which is 21600 times in a day so that many times our brain is getting the contraction and the expansion effect during kapal bhati we are breathing 50 to 100 times in a minute sometimes even more right so that contraction and, and expansion effect on the brain is way more than it happens usually that is why the massaging effect on to the brain right now kapal bhati kriya also works on the facial muscles it relaxes the facial muscles and keeps the face young shiny and youthful so if you want to maintain the youth do kapal bhati every day all right so this covers our shat karma topic go through the topic very thoroughly make good notes go through the written material take the quiz and i will see you in the next lecture